Rolling Grimes back. Rolling Grimes show live here on WBGR. We believe in God Radio Sports.com. Again, telephone number is 301 429 All right, folks, all jokes aside, this is a very serious conversation that we're having. And actually, we had some other things on the agenda tonight, but uh, now that this news broke, it's so big and it's so bad that uh, we, you folks, deserve the opportunity to be able to air your feelings. So if you're going to call in, great. If not, you want to leave some messages on Facebook or uh, contact the station, feel free to do so because this is a very serious topic that we're dealing with right now. Getting back to the situation with Aaron Hernandez, there was some, some conversation uh, off the air, and I guess that there's been you know, some testimony that came out that he was involved in a number of drive-by shootings and some other things. Um, dealing with weapons and also, and I guess, very, very aggressive assaultive behavior. Um, we're talking about, you know, how an NFL team decides to keep someone like that. Coach Tanya, Lionel, any other employment, would a person be allowed to continue to work for their employee with that kind of reputation? No, not that I know of. No, not, in, I mean, I don't know. Some would until they found was found guilty. Yeah. I was so sure. rep, so reputation, <clears throat> reputation wouldn't necessarily get them fired. Not if you're no, already currently in the job. Yeah. Then you're looking at They'll put you on leave or something yeah. like that. They'll until they find out what's going on. Now, if you have people in the office complaining about your behavior, being aggressive, assaultive, etc., you're going to have a problem, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's another, yeah. If you mess with people in your office, then, yeah, you're going to have problems with that. Or if people in your office are talking about what you're doing on the street. No. No. No? No. Because then they're going to have to prove that. Okay. Okay. So you know, the legal it's, system it's would allow that Kind of like hearsay. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. Okay. Super. Hey, folks, we're going to uh, bring But let in. me tell you, though, real oh. quick, the NFL is work for hire situation type. So they, as soon as... Um, mm -hmm. He was charged. They fired him. They fired him. Two, mm -hmm. two hours later. Right. And there's no jurisprudence? Nah. There's work for in that situation. No. We don't, we don't want you connected to us. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when they talk about it being NFL not for long, it's for real. It's so for any real. given day, for any given, if a given moment, I guess my mic is dropping on me. Any given day, any given moment, they can get rid of you. Yeah, you got your last game, basically. Okay. You played your last play. <laughs> you just got off the field. Excuse me. I guess my head isn't big enough for the uh, – Coach Tanya is fixing it. Uh, we're doing some uh, some technical adjustments. Should I get the big mic back? With them? Don't touch the mic. Uh, Ron, is, don't you touch that <laughs> darn mic. Hey, folks, straight from Canton, Ohio, everybody say hello to my good friend Ken. Hi, Ken. Hey, how's it going? Ken, the reason why, uh, one of the reasons why I asked you to come to the studio tonight is because you want to our early call-ins uh, about a month ago, and I really, really appreciate it and enjoyed some of your feedback and commentary. Now, I just happen to have a strong affinity for the great state of Ohio, the heartbeat of America. The heart of it all. That's and right. uh, and I think I mentioned to you, and if I did, and I was recruited by the Ohio State Buckeyes. That's always good. That's yes, always it was. Good, Sat it? next to Tim Spencer. Tim Spencer, who's great running is, back in Yeah, whose son State. is playing for them now. Matter of yep. fact, he made a big play, I guess, in the uh, – Alabama. Yeah, in the championship game, or the game before the championship game, yep. right? The Sugar Bowl. And uh, and it brought back some memories. I was on the same recruiting trip with Pepper Johnson. Really? And I was supposed to block for a guy named Keith Byers. Keith Byers. So they, awesome. they won. memories. Yeah, he was a, up. Yeah, he was a 230-pound tailback. Yep. And they wanted to put a 260-pound fullback in front of him. And I looked around like, who's 260? I was like 240 <laughs> at the time. I'm like, who the heck is 260? They're like, dude, by the time you, you eat. You were going to be 260 you were going when they to get be done with you. I didn't believe him until, like, right after I graduated, I was on my right. way to the Dolphins. Right. And they said, hold up, dude, you're 260. 57 pound running back. We're going to have to rethink your position. I'm like, the people from Ohio State told me I was going to be in the guard. And that was just off of salad and cranberry juice. Imagine if I eat some real Look at your eyebrows. Imagine if I eat some real food. Yeah. I'm just a stud. That's all it is. <laughs> Ken, you have a little pedigree in football. Tell us about it. Uh, I, I played football all my life. Uh, I did it all through. Growing up in Canton, Ohio, where you know football is actually the a religion, it's, it's, it's just a religion. It's the cradle of modern day football. You know, so I played all through high school, played a little bit at Boston University, uh, where Chris Palmer was my coach. Uh, CP eventually left to become the uh, wide receivers coach at Houston. 
when they were still the Houston Oilers. The Oilers. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I didn't have the money to stay, and he was that close to offering a scholarship. Okay. Uh, and then uh, currently I'm on staff at uh, one of the local high schools in Waldorf and North Point High School. So, okay. you know, football, I, I love it, man. I, I eat, sleep, and breathe it. So are you on staff with the school or just with the football program? Both. Both. Okay. Yep. So you're I, educated by Trent. I'm an educator. I'm uh, presently uh, doing, I'm the in-school suspension proctor. Wow. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I was the in-school suspension proctor for a school, first grade through fifth grade. I know. So that meant you stayed in school suspension the whole time from first grade through fifth grade. I know what that meant because I was one too then if that was the case. telling all your business. That was not code for hours. I can't believe Tanya Tanya was in school suspension that much. We're going to have to go back and check your V-Tech. I was in a whole lot of trouble in school. Do tell. No, I, I was amazed. I was just coming out of grad school. I got a call from Syracuse City School District, and they said, we're going to hire you an in-school suspension proctor, coordinator, yeah, proctor, whatever, yeah. right? We're going to pay you $20 an hour, which yeah. is big money in Syracuse. Right. And I said, great. Which high school? You know, Henniger, Fowler, Corcoran? And they put you in the middle. They said, no, Dan, no, Dan Fourth Elementary. <laughs> Elementary school. And I said, what? I, Second grade is doing in school. <laughs> Don't you just? They were like, no, nah, times have changed. Times have changed. <laughs> we suspend them now. And they can't yes. stay at home. No. Mm-hmm. What does a what does a seven year old? I'm sorry. Uh, don't no. don't say that. What does a seven year old do to get suspended, bro? You would be surprised. I was. You would yeah. be surprised. I was. And then a lot of it is it's not necessarily what the kids do, it's that the teachers. Don't, don't want, to deal, want to deal with the kids. There's some of that. There's definitely yeah. some of that. And you know. The punishment isn't what it used to be. When I got in school suspension <laughs> one time in middle school, uh, they gave you detention along with the in school suspension. Well, you know they don't give detention anymore. That's like that's that's it's overtime for some. That's overtime. Well, on top of that, you know, if you got detention, that meant you didn't catch the bus home. Well, when I was coming up, that just meant you walked home. You walked home. Well, now that's, you know, that's a no-no. You can't have the kids walking home unattended and unsupervised. Something happened to them on their way home and, you know, people are suing the school. So now it's uh, it's almost like a daycare center as you're babysitting. So you're an absolute necessity then. You have to be in there. You have to be in there. My radio is going off. It's fluid in in-school suspension. I might have nobody the first hour of the day, and after that first hour I might have three, four kids. <laughs> So, and then you deal with the football side of mm-hmm. things. Now, mm-hmm. for those who don't know, were you Canton McKinney? No, I wasn't Canton McKinley. Okay. I know what you're talking about. Okay. Uh, I actually went away to high school okay. on, a, on, a, on a scholarship, on an academic scholarship, but I was headed to McKinley. Okay. All my family went to McKinley. They were all Bulldogs. And growing up, you wanted to be a Canton McKinley Bulldog. No, they had one of the toughest football programs in the nation. And still do. Let that, don't let that be mistaken. Okay, he said that with a certain amount of jaundice in his foot. <laughs> he's no. biased on Ohio. I'm from Ohio, too, but, I mean, he, he's really. Nah, I mean, he actually, I, you know, I kind of felt, did you feel it come out of this guy? Like, man, don't you get it twisted. Hey, it's, you it's, know, it's, I'm from Southeast. Hey, we, we have a. <laughs> we have a <laughs> I ran all y'all over back in the day. <laughs> we have a saying at Camp McKinley. And what it's, and it's, uh, it's, it's written on the school board. Oh, here we go. Camp McKinley, where champions are made and success is tradition. Is that right? A lot of winning going on. Run them all Kent. over. <laughs> <laughs> they would have they never seen a brother like that. And you, you would have been I'd around. I'd when did you graduate high school? Man, 80, 80, 82. You would have been around around that time. You remember Dean Brown? Yeah, I remember Dean, Dean Brown. Dean Brown. Uh, Dean just passed away a couple of years ago. Uh, my condolences. Uh, but he was a McKinley Bulldog. Uh-huh. And uh, Percy Snow. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, Percy and Dean were on the 85 McKinley team. Uh, Percy what? Snow, Michigan State, Percy yep. Snow? Yeah. Okay, I, I, I retract that statement. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want no parts of Percy. I, mean, I ain't saying want no parts of it. I just didn't want a whole lot of parts of Okay, yeah. I retract that statement. I might have had to negotiate my position a right. little bit. And his younger brother, uh, uh, Eric, played yeah. in the NBA. Uh-huh. That's, that's Percy's younger brother. Eric Snow. Yeah. Wow. And their sister, Linda, was a tremendous athlete. I, you know, I'm amazed at the fact that y'all actually grow basketball players in Ohio. I just, but then it's right next to Indiana and they Kentucky, ball, man. man. They ball. They uh, ball. Yeah. I'll tell you who else is a McKinley Bulldog. Oh. Josh McDaniels. The quarterback? The quarterback coach uh, for the Patriots. And you, coach Tom used Brady. Used to be quarterback? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Quarterback coach? Yeah. Okay. His dad was the coach of those teams with Percy Snow. Is that right? Guys. Yeah. Tom McDaniels. A lot of history. A lot of Kent, history. Kenton is also home of the NFL Hall of Fame for Absolutely. those who don't know. Absolutely. Now, 
Aaron Hernandez situation. Mm -hmm. uh, you have some thoughts on that. Talk to me about it. What what goes through your mind when you think of this whole endeavor? Man? Well, a, a couple of things come to mind when I think about this guy, man. You know, earlier we, we talked about uh, how can people allow themselves to be influenced, you know, by a guy like that. And the time you made some good points. You know, people, hangers on get some benefits too. And people that own the, the establishments that Aaron Hernandez might frequent, they get some benefits. There's a lot to be said for owning the establishment that LeVar Arrington comes to or uh, Aaron Hernandez comes to or Tom Brady is always eating Well, here. look, I mean, in clubs in New York City, they'll mm -hmm. drop $5,000 for a certain artist to come right. to the club right. mm -hmm. just so that people later can say he was he there. He was here, right. You know, it might be eight <clears throat> people there that day, right. but they're going to make money off of that for the next month right. and, and, and as everybody's so that, waiting for the next cycle. So that whole cycle is not just, you know, the hangers on per se, but everybody seems to be benefiting from these guys being present in their establishment, whether it be the gas station, the corner store. Well, nice okay, so that's not a bad thing. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the, the owners benefit, mm -hmm. the patrons benefit, the athlete benefits. Mm -hmm. Okay. The problem is you can't sift out guys like Aaron Hernandez, man. This dude, when you think about it, you have to think this this guy's not well in the mind. You know, it's, it's easy to say, you know, that guy's high, you know, don't let him in. But this guy, you know, he passes himself off in everyday life like he's one of us. But really... He's got something going on. When you kill three people, allegedly, and the one we know for sure, and shoot another you're not one in well. the face. Yeah, you, you're not you're not wrapped too tight, you know. You're a my serial dad killer. Yeah, yeah, you know. Right. You, you, you don't do things. You're not doing things rational the way that other folks would do them. Normal folks would do them. He's operating on a different code. And somebody like that is dangerous, man. And, and you can't. It's hard. To, the NFL can have all the. Uh, the classes and that sort of thing, but you can't predict who those guys are. They just, unfortunately, they surface when they surface, and then you have to deal with them after the fact. I mean, when you go back through history, and, and again, I don't mean to just isolate, but because we're having this conversation, mm -hmm. you're going to isolate athletes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you go back and you look at the Ray Carruth situation, right. you know, the Carolina right. Panthers. Yeah. Now, Latanya, here was a guy who <clears throat> he impregnated his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And I guess somewhere along the line, he got this brilliant idea that, you know, I don't really want her to have this baby. Mm -hmm. So he hires a hit. So she's driving down the street, and he's in the he's in the car yeah. where the people are shooting at her. Yeah. Oh, he's in another he's car. In, I think he was a trail car. He was a trail car <laughs> to the to the to the hitman's car, mm -hmm. and they're on the cell phone, and he's pointing the car out or whatever he's doing, and they're having this dialogue on the cell phone while they're sh sh gunning shooting her down. Him. Yeah, and they they killed him. Yeah. Wow. And he. I guess he's got life in prison or close to it. it was did the baby was the baby born? I think the I baby. Think she I think she survived. had the baby. Yeah, yeah I think she think had the baby. Because if not, then he would have had right double right. murder. Right. Now in this case, you know, again <clears throat> the question then becomes second degree, first degree. Let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know the difference between what happens in a second degree versus first degree mm -hmm. murder case. Mm -hmm. First degree is considered intent, right? Premeditated. Premeditated, premeditated, right. Well, most murder is intentional. Right, right. But first degree is premeditated. Mm -hmm. So somewhere before I saw you, I, I thought about doing this I and I planned it out. Right, you yeah. got it. Mm -hmm. Second degree may be reactionary. Mm -hmm. We got in a fight. Manslaughter. Right. We got in a fight. Mm -hmm. All right, because now you're throwing blows, I'm throwing blows. Mm -hmm. You win. Right. Manslaughter. Mm -hmm. All right. And then there are degrees of that. We just found out in this case with the. Uh, the police officer in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I didn't know there was a such thing as second degree manslaughter. Me uh, that, that has four, yeah, it has four years. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> in the state of Oklahoma, it's a four year sentence max. Wow. wow. Yeah, second degree manslaughter. <laughs> uh, so that was just so they can put, say, I put you in jail. We did something. I mean, you have to take them off the street. You have mm -hmm. to do something mm -hmm. because it's like everything else in life. When something happens, something goes down, people want blood for that. Mm -hmm. right. you know, they, they need retribution. Mm -hmm. That's a natural instinct. So somebody, somebody's head's got to roll. Um, unfortunately, in our society, and this is also gets into this situation with Aaron Hernandez, heads roll a little differently depending upon who you are and who you look like. Mm -hmm. Now, Aaron Hernandez, Hispanic? I believe so, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Aaron Hernandez killed a African-American. American. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so initially, if he wasn't, 
would we get the same kind of verdict? If this guy wasn't, would we get the, now historically speaking, that's not been the case. Right. Today, things may be a little bit it different. All, it right. depends on the day. But historically, that hasn't been the case. Mm -hmm. But there was a, you know, I know that when this process happened, he made it very difficult, like most of the murderers do, for the police to get evidence and to, especially evidence that was going to point to him. Mm -hmm. So now, like any human being, they're getting angrier as they go. Right. And all of a sudden now, you know, this whole concept of even negotiating what it might be, mm -hmm. you know, is taken off the table completely because he could have, and they could have said, we got into a fight. Mm -hmm. Right. And he started to run and I took him out. Right. Well, nobody else was there. So... But as time went on and they became, the law enforcement became more and more aggravated with the situation, mm -hmm. and some of that started. To, <laughs> that goes off the table. Right. That goes off the table, and then there's a lot of pressure put on the people that were there with him. Now, apparently, when he killed this guy, they were, <laughs> some of his friends was with him too. I think mm -hmm. they were there, yeah. And the cameras were on in his house, showing different things that were going on, showing him, um, the they gun. showed him. Yeah prior at a store at a gas station going in him and one of the guys and from the video it looked like he either was upset high something mm -hmm. and dude was talking to him and then in the house it showed him with the gun um it showed about the timeline of one of the frames in there being off and the guy had the keys to your truck in his pocket yeah i mean you, got, <laughs> you have smoking gun in the number on a number of levels so let's paint this picture Odin Lloyd, you had mentioned him off camera. Mm -hmm. Now, he knows stuff about Aaron Hernandez as the rest of us wouldn't right, know. Right. There seems to be concern, some concern about what he may have known and how that may have also right. led yeah, to the situation. Seemed to be, uh, from something that I read, that because of Odin Lloyd's connection to Hernandez, being the, the brother of his fiance, he knew some things about the alleged double homicide. Uh, now, that information wasn't allowed to be presented in court because it was called speculation. But right, because know, dead man isn't talking. Right. You and I both know, you know what happens on the streets and what happens in the courts are mm -hmm. two different things. Right. I know, and you know I know. Mm -hmm. um, now, whether that can be proven in court, that's something totally different, but you and I have our understanding. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, seemed, that may be some of the impetus behind the, behind the murder. Uh, maybe he feared that this guy might might cry, might sing the blues on him somewhere down the road, and 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 out him on the double homicide. So, uh, with these sorts of things, and with a, with a Hernandez who seemed to have a a hairpin trigger, man, uh, who knows what might happen? I mean, him. you know, unless unless my my movie uh, unless my movie history is is eluding me. Every time I watch The Goodfellas or The Godfather, they always take out the people around them that, <laughs> that knew mm -hmm. stuff right. that they shouldn't what's, know. What's that old saying? Is, is if three people know mm -hmm. a secret, the only way to keep it a secret is if two of them are dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if three the, people know the secret, it's not a, it's secret. Not a secret. Exactly. Somebody's talking. Somebody's going to tell. You know, I had a, and this is, you know, I got to tell a story. This is hilarious. I was in Syracuse, and a, and a friend of mine, there I go with my friends. Let me go stop you. <laughs> and a friend of mine owned a restaurant. And no, he worked at a restaurant. Mm -hmm. So this joker steals like $35,000. He breaks into the restaurant at night, steals $35,000. No, the he, restaurant he, that he no, worked no, at? No, no, they worked at. Actually, he, he didn't break into it. He hid Stayed himself. there. <laughs> <laughs> he hid in the closet. So he steals this thirty five grand, right? Mm -hmm. And he puts it in the towel in the ceiling. So when the police come looking for evidence, or whatever, they can't find anything. They can't find the money, of course, because he yeah, hid it. Putting... Now, apparently there was you know, something that made it traceable, whatever it was, whatever it was in. Mm -hmm. So when they, of course, inside job, they couldn't find anything. Right. right? He hid it in the ceiling, <laughs> the drop ceiling, right? So, because of the towel, you know, he just yeah. slid the towel. So, he goes back one day, and he gets it. He, now, he's got a couple of dollars, and he's an average kind of guy. But now, all of a sudden, he gets a, a girlfriend that is a little more high post, because now... He got some money to spend on it. a little bit, right? right? Apparently, in a fit of passion, he, he rolls over and tells her, hey, by the way, no... 
Kid, don't look at me like that. <laughs> that hey, so there's some pillow talk. There's some pillow uh, talk. No, no, no. <laughs> excuse, excuse me, excuse me for, I guess, I guess he was concerned about some other aspect of his, of his performance or something. So he decided to trump it. So he says, hey, guess what I did? They broke up and this joke oh, was coming man. out of him. And wow. Oh my goodness, and say it ain't so, it's so. So, so one of the things about being a, 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 a thug or being a, a, a thief, or sometimes you want to brag about yeah, it because yeah. you mm-hmm. get points. That's that conscience. That's, you know, mm-hmm. some, I can't remember what who said it, but they said a lot of times that's what gets people caught. It's, it's no good, I think they're saying it's, it's no good to do the deed if you can't tell anybody about it. Mm-hmm. What's, the, what's, what's the punchline what's the point? in it? What's the, what's the right. point? Right. What's, what's the, the point? point in doing it? If right. I can't tell nobody, if I can't flaunt my money, if I can't tell you how you know how slick I was, or how thorough I was, or how I outsmart somebody, then I don't get anything out of it. Because ego will bring you down. It's, it's really about ego at the end of the day. <coughs> I got to tell somebody that I did this. <coughs> Excuse me. I just that whole they got me all choked up. <laughs> that would choke so me then up with, I mean, so the with Hernandez, then is it ego? Of course. Okay. I think it's I think it's more than that with Hernandez. He does you know, a mental we, illness. We, uh, yeah, <laughs> I think I think we're talking about a sociopath, a psychopath. Well, no, I, I think you're right. You know, mm-hmm. you don't kill three people. You know, I've always, when I think about you know these are cases and murder cases, really the only time that I could see killing somebody would be war, or in defense of my home. To me, if you really think about it, anything other than that, you're not well if you kill somebody. To take another human life, you got to really be off. You know, there's nothing. If you're fighting and nothing clicks in you, okay, this dude is done. I'm, you know, I won. It's over. But to keep on and keep on and keep on, or to just shoot somebody in the face and blow their head off and all that stuff, to me, you you can't you can't be normal. There's something in you that's not really. I don't know if you want to call it not demonic, psychotic, sociopathic, whatever. You're not really. Like the rest of us, if you if you can take a human life like that. Now this also might help you as a football player. That same good point mentality. That's right. So should I be scared of you? Of course. Or you? I'm I'm, I'm healed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never healed. <laughs> I always got it in me. I just keep it someplace. But that's where a, that's a very good see. point. When okay. You, when you start talking about a safety who's roaming in that backfield mm. and will come up and rattle your teeth when you catch that ball. Mm. He has to have a certain mentality that I'm, I'm going to light you up. I mean, the best thing is what I looked at you as an opponent, and I didn't see a human being. Right. And when you kill someone, same thing. Right. I, mm-hmm. I can't see you as a son of right. a mother and father. I can't right. see you as a father, father right. of mm-hmm. children. A brother or whatever. Right. I can't, I can't see you. In any human relation, you're an at opponent, all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? In in football, it was easier because you were a color, mm-hmm. you know. So, I was taught early, anyone in opposing color, get them, right? Mm-hmm. And they're coming for you. Mm-hmm. So, the more of a demon you have in you, and you can apply that into something like football, right? It helps you mm-hmm. on the gridiron. Right. And we glorify it. And we do. Now the question becomes, when you don't turn that off, when you leave the field, right? you carry it into other aspects of your life. Like this, We're not going to talk about what he allegedly did. <clears throat> He's been convicted of murder. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the evidence suggests that he did it. Mm-hmm. There are witnesses that probably <laughs> corroborated that. Mm-hmm. So... We're talking uh, talking of someone who actually took that kind of mentality that is on the football field mm-hmm. and applied it in real life to someone who was not in a position to defend themselves. Now, that's right. where I then start to have more concern. See, I think it's a little bit of the opposite. I think he took the gangster mentality to the football, to the football field. field. Oh. I think the gangster thug is who he was or is. Okay, he just was able to channel that on the football field because we're not talking about a defensive player, like you said before. He was an offensive player, well, and not, they and they put him well, in. We'll call a spade a spade. Oh yeah, absolutely. 
early on, you play offense and defense. Mm-hmm. Later on, you become a specialist mm-hmm. on one side of the ball. Mm-hmm. But the mentality, the the mentality John is Mac- there. John Mackey as a tight end yep. was a linebacker. you got to be able to block if you're going to play linebacker. You, you, you have to hit people. You mm-hmm. have to collide. Okay, mm-hmm. and, and like you said, they're, they're putting him in position to what, what, what we call a matchup nightmare. You can't match up with this guy because of his size and his speed and his stature. He brings a lot of tools to the table. But I think his what we saw on the field was what he brought with him. I don't even think of a situation where he took his football mentality into the world. He brought the world onto the football field, if you follow what I'm saying. His world, his gangster world. And that just, you know, it caught up with him. It caught up with him. And a lot of people around him. Mm-hmm. So now he's life in prison. No That's well it should be. No parole. Mm-hmm. That's well it should be. Now, we're going to take a, a one – a 30-second station break in a second because I need to bring Brandon on to close out some stuff. Mm-hmm. But life in prison without parole is very difficult for a prosecutor to get that kind of sentence mm-hmm. in almost any case. Mm-hmm. What was it about this one, you think, that led to, like, no parole? Well, I think Massachusetts being a, a, a blue state, I don't think they had the death penalty because I think they would have gone for that if they could. And I, I think life without parole is about as harsh as you can get. And I think it, it was the, the callousness of it, the senselessness of it, uh, you know, to kill a man because what? He said something to you wrong? You know, and, and then the rest is speculation. But, again, when you do that sort of thing, man, and, and you take somebody's life over something so minor and something so senseless, uh, I think the the prosecutor felt like this is a guy that shouldn't be among the rest of us walking and, the streets. And, and apparently the judge went with it. Yeah. And I said, we're going to take a quick station break. We'll be right back in a few seconds. Rolling Grimes, Rolling Grimes show here. Uh, I want to thank Ken for being on with us. He'll be back. Brandon, my intern, you have some information for yes, us sir, that might yes, be sir. helpful. Drop what have you found out about this case? Um, well, clearly, clearly, there was a lot of speculation going on about this case. Um, it was a big upset to everybody. You know, he was one of the best tight ends, in my opinion, you know, in the game. And for all this to just come out so so fast is, you know, it's, it's very shocking. But um, what I kind of thought was the reason for the drive-by shooting in the first place really wasn't a, a reason at all. He didn't have a logical reason to do it. You know, it was over spill drinks at a nightclub. And that right there is just something that's not even, you know, necessary, you know, for to you to to you to catch that type of charge over, you know, a spill drinks. And um I just feel like that really that gangster mentality as everybody else said took over, you know I mean that's yeah, that's beyond gangster. I mean you that's, people, you're in the club. People gonna step on your shoe and spill drinks on you right. when you're moving around. Right. That's that's definitely beyond that's definitely beyond gangster. That right there transitions from something gangster to I think something not connecting right in your mind. You know, I feel like as I mentioned earlier about him being like a, a sociopath or something like that. You know, I really feel like it was something more to him that didn't really click in his mind. You know, because it's one thing like you said to you know uh, to step on somebody's foot in a club, but you don't have to murder them for it. You know, mm. so mm-hmm. I feel like that really um, there was just something about him about right. his whole persona. You know that wasn't right in the first place. Well, we're going to, uh, I'm sure some more things will come out over the next week, and we'll probably open the next show with some of that as we move into some other things. But, Brandon, appreciate you being here. Ken, thanks. Coach Tanya, of course, Lionel, my man Ron on the wheels of steel, rolling bubble ground, saying good night. We look forward to seeing you next week. As Coach Tanya said, don't be late, 7.30 p.m. next Wednesday, WBGR Sports. Good night. is Exit Elite Realty, and I represent a real estate team called the Ryan Team, which consists of about eight members, and we're all agents under Exit Elite Realty. So we basically 
we go after most of your buyers. We do a lot of what we call guerrilla marketing. Okay. You may see us all around town. You see our signs that say the Bryant team, 580 credit score approved, FHA, VA loans. Mm -hmm. um, basically, so that's basically one of the things we do. I have the know-how with within the legalities of the real estate laws and things like that to operate and go after buyers the way we do. Uh, I mean, we constantly, we, we have buy broker appointments at least three or four times a week. Okay. Um, and like I said, we do have listings. We have a, a, a lot of listings. But our unique and unorthodox approach is if we're not showing a house, then we're not working.